Call the meeting to order with the pledge. Recording in progress. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on the agenda is roll call. Joe Gillespie? Here. Carol Lanning is not here. Scott McDonough is not here. Jeff Cook, I'm here. Brian Patterson? Present. Joe Sizemore? Here. Glenn Bischoff? Here. We have a quorum. Next is the uh, minutes from the March 29th meeting, 2022. Are there any additions or corrections? Floor is open for a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Joe Gillespie has made a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Joe Sizemore seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda is Deb, vaccine refrigerator. certifies the following action in regards to transferring from one major budget classification to another public law 54 SB effective April 14 1971 was done at a meeting on April 26 2022 from general office supplies 
$374.73. To general machinery, equipment, vehicles, $374.73. From staying alive, personal services, $3,000. To staying alive, operating supplies, $3,000. From staying alive, personal services, $2,000. To staying alive, services and charges, $2,000. From staying alive, Social Security, $385. To staying alive, services and charges, $385. From park and recreation, office equipment, $118.45. To park and recreation, picnic tables, $118.45. From general appetit jurors, $2,000. To general law books, $2,000. And that such transfers did not necessitate expenditures of more money than was set out in detail in the budget as finally approved by the State Department of Local Government Finance. The transfer was made at a regular public meeting to proper resolution, a copy of which is attached to this certificate dated this 26th day of April, 2022. Any questions? Move to approve transfer of funds certificate 2022-11. Joe Sizemore has made a motion to approve resolution 2022-11. Do I have a second? Second. Joe Gillespie seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next is the additional appropriation resolution 2022-12. Where it has been determined that it is now necessary to appropriate more money than was originally appropriated in the annual budget. Now, therefore, section one be ordained by County Council of Franklin County that for the expenses of the taxing unit, the following additional sums of money are hereby appropriated out of the fund's name and for the purposes specified subject to laws governing the same. Community crossings grant, other services and charges, $142,631.74. For a total out of community crossings grant, $142,631.74. Um, fund name Bond, capital outlays, $126,240. For a total for Bond, $126,240. Fund name Kuhn Bridge, capital outlays, $380,000 for a total for Kuhn Bridge, $380,000. Fund name NDOT Old State Road 1. Other services and charges, $80,000. Capital outlays, $30,000 for a total for NDOT Old State Road 1. Total $110,000. General Fund Personal Services, $86,520.26. Other services and charges, $47,618 for a total for General Fund, $134,000. I'm sorry, $134,128.26. Fund name 11. Five, 1159 Health, Personal Services, $2,335. Sur supplies, $300. Other services and charges, $890. Capital outlays, $9,605 for a total for $13,130. Fund name ARPA, 2021. Capital outlays, $7,500. For a total for ARPA, 2021. Total is $7,500. Adopted this 26th day of April, 2022. 
Any questions? Is there a copy of minutes in here? Yes. Uh, this is Mr. Meyer. Uh, would you happen to have the new appropriations, the total amount of what you just budgeted tonight that was not budgeted at the end of last year? Could you get a total amount of that? So you want me to read the additional appropriations again? Okay, the additional appropriations is just like what it says, whereas it, been, it has been determined that it is now necessary to appropriate more money than was originally appropriated in the annual budget. Now, therefore, Section 1 be ordained by County Council for that the expenses of the tax unit, the following additional sums of money, are hereby appropriated out of the funds named and for the purposes specified subject to laws governing the same. So, what your question is, is everything I just read is yes, it is above the budgeted budget. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I think I've seen why. I think I've signed it wrong spot. I don't know. I Do we know how much money is left in the old State Road 1 account? Okay. Um, probably tell you. Commissioners probably tell you. Commissioners, do you have a ballpark figure of how much is still in that State Road 1? Give me just a second. Sure. So, let's see, the original, the original settlement was three million one hundred eighty-five thousand. Uh, we received six hundred and thirty-five thousand in two thousand twenty-one. The additional two million five hundred and fifty thousand is coming in July, and we have spent ninety-two thousand two hundred and fifty-one. And on um, culverts in 21, uh, I think 100 is that additional for the um, 161,000 was bituminous in 21, stone and gravel was a thousand dollars in 21. Uh, so there is 135,000 left in it to pay in dollar back whenever that agreement is settled. And then there's also 134,000 beyond that. So it'd be, there's $269,000 right now left. But 135,000 has to be earmarked for in dollar payment. Mm -hmm. So there's a, yeah, that's it. It's actually $134,000 real money that can be spent as of right now. And this $80,000 is here to replace the failing structure on Sleepy Hollow? Yes. And that's needed? Yes. So basically you got another two point um, I'm, I'm sorry, the 80000 is taken out of that 635 payment. So the 134 is after the 80000 is taken out. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got another $2 million coming in July, is that what you said? 
Do you have any of that earmarked for uh, bridges, roads, low water crossings, anything? Do we have plans for those right now, since we have this money sitting here, or on its way, I should say? No. Thank you. Do you want there? <clears throat> yeah, so so here, here we are. At, we started River Road. We were thinking probably originally $600,000 for Gold Street. And now inflation has hit us with everything else. We buy two minutes of concrete, steel. I say that Gold Street's going to end up a million dollars in there by the time we're all said and done. Hope not. Oh, this is yeah. So your answer is not not specifically earmarked, but we got to keep some money back for it. That's all. Well, that's it's <coughs> two point five million. You said your your overages is going to be about one five to two hundred fifty thousand somewhere there. Let's say it's an extra four hundred thousand dollars, and we go all the way to a million in Global's Creek. Is that? What about the rest of the money? Do we have, we, we don't have that earmarked for anything else? Uh, some new equipment. We, we don't have anything for snow trucks for uh, 22 and the foreman's trucks are due to replace. So I had uh, 550,000 for equipment out of that two, two and a half million. So it brings it down to two million, basically. <clears throat> yeah. It, so is there, so out of getting the foreman's new trucks, we're going to have roughly $2 million left. Yes. Is there any chance we can get some low water crossings fixed? Probably not. We've got bridges in the works that's going to probably, we, we really got to look at our bridge line and look at Larry and I have been working on it the last couple of days and it's, uh, can we review once with them later what's coming? You want to do that? Uh, Count the whole record. We just got a, a bridge in. I mean, we, we just got a bridge in uh, Oldenburg to rehab. It's considered a historically select bridge. It's going to be, gosh, what is it? A million two or three. Uh, it's a project. In, con in conjunction with Oldenburg Federal Lake Project, they're redoing Water Street, new sidewalks, new paintings. Anyway, so that's coming up. We just got the word on it here last week, so we don't have any funds set aside for that. And on Bridge 31, which is a Federal Lake Project, is going to go to construction in 2023 and it'll be a million five almost we'll have to have our 20 percent which is 300,000 plus we have to up front the construction engineering is likely to be close to 200,000 now we will be reimbursed 80 20 on that 200,000 but we'll have to have the construction money up front so, so that'll be about 100,000 or 80 so I'm sorry. How, how, how much is going to be out of our pocket on these two bridges that you just talked about? On the historic bridge in Oldenburg and the one, Bridge 31. <coughs> the Oldenburg structure, it's a fairway project, so it won't go to construction until 2027. So we have to have roughly 100000 in the account that will start getting reimbursed at 80 and then there was 200,000, 200, I'm sorry, at the bridge 31 for construction engineering or inspection, and roughly 300,000 for the actual construction. That's our 80 20 money. So there's about 600,000. 600,000 on a million dollar bridge? Yeah, I mean, that's part of the cost. Next year, some point in time. So you know, I, I know nobody wants to replace low water crossings more than I do. Uh, 
When I originally took office, Mr. Wilson and I, back when we first started, we, our goal was to replace the Little Water Crossing every year. And we was on schedule for a while. And then the floods came. We started losing bridges. So here we are, we, we've, got, we've got bridges washed out that, with roads closed. And we've got federal projects in the works that we have to match money on. So I'm telling you, if we have money available, we will do a little water crossing. When is, uh, so how many water, water crossings do we currently have right now? Uh, 26. Twenty-six. Yeah. What you consider some of our small yeah. pipes. So in the last, well, let's go ten years. How many have we replaced? Larry, anybody? Uh, I don't have a figure on that. Is it one? No. I know we've done more than that. I'm, I'm well, I, I don't know. I'm asking. I really don't know the answer. I'm going to say five. Some of the ones we have right now are so major that you try to replace them, they need three, four million dollars. You have to build a bridge up high enough to, and extend the road for half a mile or so to get it out of the floodplain. So, have we done, done any in the last five years? <coughs> well, what's the last one we've done? Duck Creek? I don't think we've done it in the last couple yeah, of years. So, so. Duck Creek was a few, was several so. years ago. It was yeah. after five years, I think. So, because I remember I mean, when that. So beyond beyond low water crossings, uh, we've got places failing where creeks are encroaching the roads, and we've got some major money going to have to be spent. Uh, we've got, I think, three of those places, and. What, Larry, one of those big cedars is going to be a quarter of a million? Johnson Fork is going to be Johnson Fork. It could be up to a million dollars. Maybe we just do a band-aid on a portion of it, probably 250000 So, you know, the, the, probably the most important low water crossing would be Pipe Creek, and that's a $2 million project. Because you not only have to build a bridge, you have to elevate probably a hundred to 150 yards of road to get it out of floodplain. Okay, I understand that, but it doesn't seem like we have a, a, a concrete plan to do, to get these taken care of. If we start saving a little money every year, we can work on getting these taken care of, it seems like. And I'm going to say this, other than one bridge out tomorrow, we don't have, <clears throat> you know, there's no, uh, I'm trying to see how I say this, other than the bridge tomorrow, I don't see anybody dying on bridges that we're talking about here. I do see them dying on low water crossings. So to me, I, I cross one every day. And I, I would just want to get a plan together. If we're talking, we've got $2 million sitting here from the state that we didn't know was coming. And we're down to roughly $800,000 for a project in 2027 and then one in 2023 that we should have already had this money set aside for, that's still going to leave us $1.5 million to fix one, two, three, I don't know, because we don't have numbers in front of us. We don't have a weapon in front of us either. Do you know how many people have died in the water crossing in the last 24 years? In the last 24 years? How many? One person, okay. A lady on Pike Creek. And actually, this hits hard for me because they found, she washed up on my property. Right. I found her, along with, uh, well, actually, my brown uh, dog found her. He did, and that's kind of crazy, but she did. Yeah, but you also recently just said that you don't, that your uh, district doesn't have uh, really any issues with the water crossing. I thought that was kind of funny since somebody washed up in your backyard. You know, I haven't had one complaint on the water crossing, but I'm not bringing that up right now. So this is a council meeting. Well, we're talking about <clears throat> money that we're going to spend, and it should be, some of it should be allocated toward the water crossings. 
and have a plan. All right, any other discussion? I'm good. I guess the floor is open for a motion to approve. Motion? Uh, um, motion on the appropriation resolution 2022-12. Glenn Bish Office made a motion to approve resolution 2022-12. Second. We have a second from Joe Gillespie. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next is John Palmer. And that's uh, all I have to say. 
say right now? Any questions? I spoke. I spoke with Mark Shires this morning, and and I told him that I would I would bring up their request to the board so that everybody knows about it and kind of tell them where they're at. They have a they have a ladder truck that is 23 years old, and they would like to upgrade that ladder truck. Uh, they are not looking to fund all of that out of this. They are, what, what they would like to, they have about, they have about $200,000 cash. Oh, wow. And they have uh, that old ladder truck that has substantial value. Uh, they look at it like it is, it's the only ladder truck in the county. Batesville has one. Uh, but it's the only ladder truck within the county. They're looking at it like a county project. They, they can reach 75 feet, and that's they're looking to duplicate that. They want a they want a new truck that they can do the same work with. Those hydraulic cylinders are huge and expensive, and they expect to have trouble. And and uh, so they're looking to uh, do a cost share of this project and uh, Mark is getting numbers around, uh, gathered up what it would actually cost and uh, uh, so that's that's a pro John and I've met with them and I've told them that I would uh, I would support their project and uh, uh, I told them I'd bring it up this evening and uh, make everybody aware of it. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I wanted to start a project over for Andersonville Community Center. I mentioned to you I'm going to start a project for the Andersonville Community Center. Yes. They're currently going, going to get a list of stuff that it needs. Yeah. What, what you need to do is ask them to contact me. Yep. And I'll give them your number. Yeah, we can do that. And then we can talk both at one. I'll fill out the same form and fill out for everybody else. Okay. We can look at the merits of it after that. Yes. Can you, uh, who's the final approving authority? I have all close to you. I know, John, sorry. Who's the final approving authority for ARPA money? Is it the commissioners, or is it, is it, at, or is it the council? And does that occur at a public meeting, or is that behind closed doors? That was a good question. Essentially, you know, what is the final approval, or how is the final approval arrived at on the ARPA money? And the procedure that we have is this, that the projects are brought to essentially me at this point. I fill out the form saying what they want, why they want, things like that. Uh, then bring it to the commissioners and they say it sounds like a good idea or not. It's sent forward after we make sure there's enough funds to pay for it. And also asking grant for looks like it fits the, the bill. Then we bring it to the council and they decide whether they want to appropriate the money for it or not. And then it goes back to the commissioners to implement. But essentially it's a group decision. It is not behind closed doors. All the decisions we have to run. And then all the So when did the council approve the money for Metamore Fire Department? Was that just now they just did. in the appropriation? They just did. Okay, because mm -hmm. they didn't really talk through that. Yeah. Uh, you know, specific project. They just blanket approved it, so I didn't know yeah, that, who was the approving. That's where it came from. That's uh, I think as we go on, uh, there will be more discussion on these projects. This one is a relatively simple one and uh, easy to justify. So I don't think there's much of a problem. When we get into the bigger projects such as any repairs to the building or the ADA project for the government center. Uh, I think that uh, there'll be a little bit more plain about this. This is considerable, considerable more money to do that. Okay. And therefore, it needs some more public discussion. Thanks. Anything else? John, how much money do we have in the ARPA fund? I'm going to have to walk close. Uh, no, I'll say it long, John. How much money do we have in the ARPA fund? How much money do we have in the ARPA fund? Uh, after we get our second, um, we call it a tranche for second installation. Uh, we'll have 4.4 plus million dollars. We had a 7 million on that side, so essentially we have to our spending discretion without going through a lot of the other things we, we would have gone through before the state, uh, about 3.4. 3.4, 200, something like that. So How much did the town hope they receive? How much did the town hope they receive? How much did yeah, the town hope they receive? The town received around $500,000, okay. and various towns and counties were corporate received some money. Um, Laura, Laura got money, Oldenburg received money. Cedar Grove was due to 
receive money that I don't know if they accepted it. And um, I say my brain is gone. <coughs> Town out on 252. My brain. Yeah, they, they got some, but it was a lot. Uh, and so they had their own money. But the Brookville itself got about a half a million dollars. And a little over that, they set aside half a million with our million to work with the state after the first of the year when we had another million dollars to match those two things together. And the general agreement is that since they contributed a third, we contributed two thirds, and I think we split that way. So we'll actually have, after January 1st, 1.67 million dollars. I'll have 500 plus about 333, so 800,000, excuse me. Okay. So that uh, so money's still there too. Okay, so 4.4 million. Can you tell me your top four projects that we have applied for to spend that money on? Do we, can you tell me your top four projects? Four, or if we have four, can you tell me your top projects? That's a good question about top four projects. I don't think right now we have a top four. We have a lot of projects that have submitted, and we're at least talking about them. Nobody's actually submitted the projects yet. We've talked about them. Um, there's not top four yet. And so that's what I'm hoping to do in the next couple of weeks is just get the list together. I'm probably going to rank them from the most costly down to the cheapest just because there's some work that way. And then be able to go through and take a look at them and say, okay, which ones need to be done? Which ones will be most beneficial? And, and try to prioritize them that way. Again, you know, working with commissioners and, and your folks as well. So, it's, it's too early to say top four, top two, top one. Until um, we get more information together. And again, we have until the end of 2024 to move the money. And if there's any projects will take longer than that, we have until the end of 2026 to complete them. So if we had a construction project for us to uh, get our ducks in a row here and submit uh, by the end of uh, 2024, then there's two years to complete that project. And that, that's true for any project, but it's a big, a big number of projects. Because again, John, the last month or two, this whole thing's just been fluid. Yes. We, I mean, we have not been able to sit down to actually, we, we have to figure out what we can and cannot spend this money on yep. before we say, well, we, by gosh, we've got to spend it on this. Yep. Why waste some time if they're saying that you can't? Yeah, there's, there's okay. only three big things you can't spend money for. You can't pay off debt. Okay. If you have not paid in the, enough money to your pension fund, you can't use it to make up that deficit. And if, if this body had lowered the taxes so much that you realize that you needed something to bring back up to the level, you can't use it for that. Mm -hmm. So after that, um, we have a lot more discretion because the commissioners declared it to be lost government revenue, which they were allowed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that has more controls on it is that money we set aside for that health program that will start January 1st. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to have to adhere more closely to what the original intent of the act was for that money. Uh, but this money that we have for that, or we set aside, besides that, we have a lot more discretion. We just can't, we, we still have to do good record keeping. We have to make sure it's done for good reasons. Um, I, I won't guarantee you we're going to be audited, but I imagine a lot of small communities will get audited um, because uh, some people have already spent the money in ways that were not approved. Uh, and I don't know whether if they spent it before April of this year, this month, mm -hmm. that they're okay because now they have this. Out where they could declare it covered most covered revenue. I don't know if they were supposed to follow the rules up until January 6th. So I don't know how it's going to happen. Luckily, we didn't do it that. So we don't have to worry about anything we've done so far. Okay. Good. Get organized to get ready to go through this. So. Yeah, I'd just soon be more organized than yeah. just yeah, start spelling, spending it willy nilly. And then initially, it was just right. willy nilly. If right. you look around the state, people were spending money at very unusual. Well, good. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So, when you said you said three things that we cannot use it for, okay? You didn't mention roads, bridges, asphalt. Has that has that changed? Those are some things that would qualify if you have a project that you actually have the money for. Uh, but one of the things that the state's been pushing is try to make sure that we can, uh, if we can match this as much as possible. In other words, let's stretch as far as we can, and that's really what. The program that we were in help, that we we're supposed to be in now, that they delayed us until you know, January 1st, was to help us learn ways to stretch that line rather than say, hey, we got $3 million. Oh, good, let's go fix the bridge for two. We got one left. How could we stretch that to not spend the two? There are other sources for money. And that's one thing about this program starting January 
percent or something. They're going to look for other ways to try to find money to search it even further. And I'm looking forward to that because I think that can help us quite, quite a bit. It also means that you know if we if we look at the money we have, we can come up with projects that we might be able to use it for. But let's talk to the state, find out there's a chance we can stretch that money out to get where first get more out of it than we can. So if I've got two million, I'd rather get four out of it if I could. Um, so those are the things that they're trying to show us how to do. Right. And that's important. So that's, that's downward a little bit, but Mark, can we, so you're saying we could use some of this money for matching funds for bridge projects? You have to be careful with that, because this is federal money, and any federal money that's already uh, put towards a project, it may be difficult, if not impossible, to use this money to match federal money. So we have to be careful with that, and the state is, and even with the ready program, the state is trying to help us find ways to get around that, I should say get around it. To find a way to find funds other than uh, what we're trying to do to match some of these great projects. So it's, they're doing the best they can to help us do our best job. And it's, uh, it's interesting. They're providing some pretty good input so far. Uh, none of the great projects have been approved, none of them have been advanced uh, to the point we get approved. But they're trying to get us to the point where it's okay, the project is good. Do you have enough money? Do you want to spend this much ready on yours or something else we can pull from the side and basically send that to? So it, it seems to me that the ARC money, ready money, the whole program, it's all been put together to try to help us get the most out of this. Not just bang for your buck, but get as many bucks from someplace else uh, to match the money so that we just don't run through it very quickly. Right. And it can be done. I mean, uh, Tom said, if we're going to build a bridge at Pipe Creek, you say about $2 million? Yeah. There goes half two-thirds of our money in, in one project. Is it worthwhile? That's not my decision. That'll be all of your decision. But, uh, but those are the kind of things we have to look at. You know, if we do that, you know, what's there a chance that we're going to get money later down the road to fix that problem, maybe from a federal source? And I will tell you this, um, I had a conversation today with somebody at the state level, and they said that the infrastructure bill, there's a tremendous amount of money from Deanna, uh, more than I ever thought possible. And so there may be more money coming along for infrastructure. That's what the bill's about, is infrastructure. Right. And for us to say, okay, we'll get this money in our bill, let's spend it. Let's wait till next year and we'll see what we're going to get. Because it could be that we don't need to spend money for, for a project like Pipe Creek's bridge. Um, I think it's important that we need to fix these bridges as well. But uh, I think that for us to jump the gun and say that we've got to fix it tomorrow, using the money until we hear from the state, what this infrastructure money is going to be, I was absolutely amazed. And, uh, and before, I, before I stop, I should tell you this. I got some really good news this week. Uh, you've seen the thing in the paper, I think, about uh, charter communications slash spectrum. Uh, they won the art auction to start installing the here in the county. Uh, they're actually going to start somewhere around College Corner and move then shortly down the Union County into Franklin County. They're going to run the line through Franklin over the west side. And probably the place we need the worst, uh, around Meadowboro, Laurel, Yellow Bank, uh, McGuire Ridge Road, they're going to start installation there. They should have all the done by the end of the year. On Monday, we found out that there was the next level of broadband grants were released. They got more money. They got five more million dollars. So all told, it looks like Spectrum is going to be able to connect over 4,000 people, 4,000 properties, I should say, in Franklin County. SEI and REMC down in the southern part of the county, and uh, they actually got money as well, so that should speed up what they're doing. And on top of that, Frontier got money, and they have some installations in the county already, but I don't know where they're going to start first, but they uh, they basically wired Bath Township last year or so, a couple of years. I don't know if they turned anybody on that, but I'm hoping that they're going to use the money to actually get the same up the money. So we actually have four good riders that are pushing here in the county now to do installations. And we're far ahead of most of the other counties at this point that are on position. I'm pleased, shocked, surprised, but very, very happy uh, that we're doing this. So it's, uh, and just the constant communication with them to try to get them to do something and they are doing it. So, and it's not a dime out of our pocket. That's the one good thing I'll tell you is every one of them asked for money. Uh, they came in and said, we're going to apply for this next level grant. I said, we don't have it. And they said, well, 
we want to put the letters of support. We put the letters of support, and guess what? The cost is a dime to put it in any way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Too many counties, I think, are shoving money and said, sure, we take my half million dollars and we go with it. So, so anyway, I thought that was great. Right. Just one is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, if there's any other questions, I'll answer. If not, I'll turn the floor over to the next person. What's your salary? What's your salary? You know, you shouldn't ask a person to salary a public like that. John does, John does all this. You know, it's zero. It's zero. I just wanted to recognize yeah, that. I didn't even try to do it. I know you ain't working hard. I didn't try to do my hands. I know. Hey, John, before you go. Yes. Uh, John, yeah. council vote. Uh, I'm, when you're talking about the ARPA money, I'm going to talk about the roof on this building yeah. and uh, the handicap. I think that's, if you talk about top level projects, I think that's direct money that we got to look at. Uh, I, I think those kinds of projects will come rise to the top. Yeah. Uh, but again, I, I'm not making a decision, but yeah. I, I agree with you, uh, especially the ADA thing. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you, you folks know, but I've got a wife too bad to use a shit walker in car. And I had to bring her down here to the health department. I literally drove my car down the sidewalk and went up that wheelchair to put her up in there. And that's when I realized that the handicap situation is really is not good. Yeah. And so uh, before that, I had to worry too much about it. You know, I, I don't work so well myself, but I'm able to get up, up the steps and things like that. But I, I didn't even think about it. And I thought, geez, there's a lot of people out there older than my wife. So I think that that project, Absolutely. at least personally, it seems like a great thing to do. And so I think those kind of projects probably will float to the top. Uh, but again, that's why I like to put them in a list, look at them, what impact are they going to have, you know, what's the cost going to be, and, and let that be the criteria to come for deciding what to do first. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, all of you, thank you very much. I will now let the next person go. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Next is the Reedy Financial Group invoice, 8358, for the amount of $12,993.95. Floors open for a motion to approve. Motion to approve Reedy invoice for $12,993.95. Joe Sizemore has made a motion to approve the Reedy Financial Group invoice 8358. Do I have a second? Second. Joe Gillespie seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next is the invoice for the Barada Law Office 25292. In the amount of one hundred and thirty-eight dollars and seventy-five cents. The floor is open for a motion to approve. Move to approve the Law Office invoice two five two nine two. Joe Sizemore has made a motion to approve Barada Law Office invoice two five two nine two. Do I have a second? Second. Joe Gillespie seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Next is the ordinance number 2022-09. Grant, do you want to speak to this? Or? I, think, I think John's going to. John's speaking to me. He started talking. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to pick up the legal part of this first? Start. Go ahead. The legal part is basically there's an ordinance you need to adopt. It's not too complicated. Well, there's a, a desire to bring us more in line with what's standard practice on the stage for us, like the in-keeper stacks. And I think right now, Jolene, you're responsible for collecting the money and going after people that, Correct. that don't pay. Uh, this ordinance will allow us to have the state of Indiana's Department of Resource, uh, Revenue, excuse me, uh, take over the, that function essentially. And uh, the commissioners would also have to make a change, I think, in our original uh, initial uh, setting up of the program as well. But I think it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do it. And uh, is it, uh, it's just a lot of people have said already do this. And one of the things we need to adopt, and on the commissioner's standpoint, I think, we're great. Not the council does, but it's the uh, uh, 
I'm trying to put this the, uh, this is stable, basically stable on the innkeeper's tax. Uniform state government. Okay. Yeah. Now, does the commissioner have to go to this council uh, I think that's the commissioner's. Okay. okay. So, so essentially what we're doing is not really changing the tax law or anything like that. It's just basically dumping in the lap of somebody else and letting them do all the busy work and hard work for so. us. And uh, that also sets us up for being able to tell the state who to collect from and things like that. Let them do the collection. Yeah. I just think it's a, it's a really easy thing to do. Uh, I'm on the first and fourth too, and we also have Any questions? Uh, okay. So, Chief, do you have that ordinance? That's right. Yeah, so it's basically a stock ordinance uh, that was borrowed heavily from another county, looked over, tracks the state code, and just cleaned up the process and, and gets him closer to being able to collect this from the like this to the state. Okay. All right. Ordinance number 2022-09. An ordinance of Franklin County Council amending ordinance number 2001-15 requiring the Franklin County innkeepers tax to be reported on forms approved by Franklin County Treasurer and the tax paid quarterly to the Franklin County Treasurer. Whereas the Franklin County Council is the fiscal body in for the County of, of Franklin, State of Indiana, and whereas the Franklin County Council desires to promote and encourage conventions, visitors, and tourism within Franklin County, Indiana, and whereas the Franklin County Council adopted Ordinance 2001-15, whereas the Franklin County Council desires to amend Ordinance number 2001-15 to require Franklin County innkeeper's tax to be imposed, paid, and collected by the Indiana Department of Revenue in accordance with Indiana Code 6-9-18-3. Now therefore, be it ordained by County Council of Franklin County, State of Indiana, that Ordinance 2001-15 of Franklin County, Indiana is hereby amended in its entirety as follows. Whereas the ordinance number 2001-15, the Franklin County Council adopted this uniform county innkeeper's tax, IC code 6-9-18, at the rate of 5% to become effective July 1st, 2001. And whereas the authority of the IC code 69-18-3, the Franklin County Council desires to require the tax to be reported and paid directly to the treasurer of Franklin County. Now therefore, be it ordained that the uniform county innkeeper's tax adopted by Franklin County at the rate of 5% shall be reported on forms approved by the treasurer of Franklin County. Be it further ordained that the tax be, be paid quarterly to the treasurer of Franklin County no more than 20 days after the end of the quarter the tax is collected. A collection allowance of 2% shall be taken. A late penalty of 10% shall be added for taxes paid after the due date plus interest at the rate of 1.5% per month, annual percent rate of 18%. For each month or part of a month, the tax is overdue. Adopted by Franklin County Council this 26th day of April, 2022. Any questions? So this doesn't raise our current innkeeper's tax, it's just oh, transferring no. it, we're just switching it from you to the state. That's right. Okay. Floor is open for a motion to approve. Glenn Bischoff has made a motion to approve Ordinance 2022-09. Do I have a second? Second. Joe Sizemore seconds. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next is Amy. Hi. Um, so what I'm doing is 
trying to transfer the final payment on our county continuity plan. Um, originally, when we signed the contract for that, we got the approval to do that plan that was using FEMA COVID funds. And then the project, that fund ended, the state came down and said we couldn't spend that anymore and we had to transfer that to the county general. So this request is just simply transferring the final invoice to the correct fund, funding and account. Do you have the total of that? It's $10,000. Okay. And that would just be on next month's additional, or? Um, I think that what Carl said would be the additional for the Okay. All right. So, Council, we need a motion to approve an additional for $10,000 for are we going to call the COVID fund? Yeah, it moved all the money to County General. Yeah, and that's the next thing is all the money was there. It moved to County General. Now we have to move from County General back out to pay the bill. Yeah. That's what's going on. So the floor is open for a motion. Thank you, Alan. Stated uh, motion to approve uh, COVID ten thousand dollars COVID money. Out of County General back into the COVID line. Is that right? Um, I think Carl's having it transferred to my department um, okay. under the contractual to, to EMA then? Yeah. Okay. Got to strike the COVID line to EMA. Joe Sizemore's made a motion to uh, approve the additional for $10,000 to the EMA line for COVID expenses. Do I have a second? Okay. Glenn Bischoff seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. So next on the agenda is Tom Lincoln, the salary. I think uh, our salary ordinance says that part-time help now is $15 an hour, and I'm requesting that we take the part-time help at the highway for the summer to $17 an hour? And like the other departments, that, that's fine. You have a set amount, and I don't know what that is. You can pay $17 an hour, you meaning that you'll just use you'll up more hours. I understand. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah, we need motion. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the commissioner's uh, request to take part time at $17 an hour. Joe Sizemore has made a motion for the uh, commissioner's uh, salary for part time being, can be increased to $17 an hour. Do I have a second? Second. Joe Gillespie seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And I got one more comment. Uh, we was talking about low water crossings. We uh, we had Pipe Creek and uh, Bull Town basically shovel ready about four years ago. We had the engineer study done. We was ready to go. Uh, we was going to put bridges in them. And then that's when the floods came and took forced out bridges, so we had to stop. So. I'm sure the permits are no good, but the engineer study is done. So those two projects are laying on the table ready as soon as we get funds. So Tom Ballpark and no engineering studies, that, how, how much do you think that costs? I mean, because I remember the bridge that's on the wall there, that's $300,000 just in the engineering. These so, were minimal. You know, minimal. Meaning 40, 50,000, the no, engineering fees? I'm going to say 2025. Okay. I'm just yeah. curious, just going forward, yeah. of what money's already been spent for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how much are those projects, do you know? Or how much were the projects when you had them bid out the first time? We never had them bid. They never went to bid. Okay. We just had an estimate. Uh, Pipe Creek was one and a half at the time, four years ago. So now Larry and I is estimating it'll be probably over two now, and Bull Town will probably be 750 now. Yeah, you appropriate some money, we'll fix them, right? We'll fix all 21 of them. Just cash. Wow. 
Uh, my estimate is we got several million dollars here that we could be using for it, but we don't don't seem to have a plan. So that's my that's my concern. I know things take time and it takes money, but we need. Let's look at this. The Santa Claus showed up with a bag full of money, and we don't have a plan. I just want a plan. We got plans. I just told you he's got two plans. I don't know what you want, though. What the ministers are wanting us to approve the money for. Yeah. And we're saying, well, I, I guess I'm not speaking for council. I'm saying, just like John said, we got to figure out what we can spend this money on going forward. If if those town those other counties he's talking about already spent some, John, if we misspend this money, what happens? Do we have to pay it back? We pay it back. Yeah, that's bad. That's real bad. We got to have a plan of what we're going to spend it on. We have 2.2 million from the old state road one. That's the money I'm talking about. I know ARPA cannot be spent on road. At least I didn't think it could coming into this meeting, but it sounds like it may be a little different now. It, okay, I'm not asking to spend the ARPA money. I'm asking, we got 2.2 million. I want to fix some low water costs. And we don't have a plan, no matter what anybody in this room says. We don't have a plan. So on State Road 1, Old State Road 1, part of that money, but there's a structure failure on that, and half a million dollars of that was to, we, the NDOT threw the extra money in the, in the kitty for us to fix that structure. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep money aside for that. And they did fix the slide, but it's going to have to have some asphalt on that road. So a lot of that money, a lot of that money from the Southern State Road One settlement has to be saved to fix State Road One to make to make it a feasible county road for us for years to come. <coughs> Sir, okay. Okay. Anything else yeah, to come before council? Make sure uh, we was talking about low water bridges and you know, people get killed. I mean, every day I can do that kind of thing. What I can do to make things safe in the county. Bring the mind to get killed entirely. I mean, all over the place. Drug overdose. But the commissioners, I went to the commissioners about signs, and uh, we're going to put big warning signs at the end of the roads before the slabs, before any of the bridges that flood. But do we have enough money in there to, to do it? I'm working on that, Joe. Okay. We're, we're giving the final tally now. We'll probably come before council for a little bit of additional. Not much. We're talking probably, I think it was 12000 I think, something like that. And the idea I got from this, I come out of Marksburg, there was a big orange sign that said, hey, the next so many miles are treacherous, be careful, you know. And I see that sign, I thought, well, we can put them like at the end of Hickory Road, the end of Santa Pike, the end of Bull Town, 52, Chapel Road, all, you know. People might look and say, whoa, you know, wait a minute, let me slow down here and rethink this instead of. You think they'll see the sign? I hope they do. Yeah. I want to put a hand on there and reach out. And, Hit the car, <laughs> but no, I mean, that's a serious note. I mean, I hope it helps. It's, you know, you know something. Me and my wife actually thought of it. So. That's good. I'm glad you brought that up because I brought that to Tom Nichols, uh, brought it to him about a year and a half ago. I believe it was my first or second meeting on County Council. I actually went as far as to go out and get bids for signs, and I just got them for one side accidentally, but. It's about $160,000 to put battery-operated flashing lights that say low water crossing at, at all 26 locations on both sides. That was a year and a half ago. Motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Yeah. This is Sarah Duffy, the Franklin County Observer. Um, thank you for discussing some of the additional appropriations. How can I get um, some information to explain the other additional appropriations? Do you have some information I can get from the auditor? Absolutely. She would have some. Of the, uh, they would have something at the auditor's office. Thank you very much.
Okay, the uh, motion has been uh, first and seconded to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Meeting adjourned.